When it comes to fellow products, I've found many of their releases over the recent years to be generally more form over function, pretty much overhyped, overmarketed, and for some odd reason named almost exclusively after frat bros. So when they announced and shared the specs on their Aiden Brewer, I of course took those marketing keywords like precision control, unrivaled convenience, and pour over quality coffee with a grain of salt or two. And to be completely honest, considering my very public criticisms of many of their products, I was a little shocked to hear from their social rep or whoever emailed me and say, hey, do you want an Aiden Brewer for review, no strings attached? But of course I thought maybe my email just stayed on there on accident, and so I accepted, it arrived, and now here we are. And since then, roughly two months or so, I've been brewing quite a bit more filter than my average little to none to see what it can do and if it can turn a daily espresso drinker into a filter believer. So as I often do in my reviews, we're of course going to cover its features, its performance, and of course its downsides. But first, a quick word from this video's sponsor, Third Wave Water. The most important ingredient to a good cup of coffee is water. And that's because purely by the numbers, water makes up to 98% of what's in your cup, and it's absolutely vital to the long-term reliability of your equipment. So after months of testing and trials, I've landed on third wave water formulas for all of my coffee preparation. Not only is it formulated to not produce scale or cause corrosion, but there's an option for every palette. Third wave water offers a wide variety of mineral blends specifically designed to get the most out of your favorite roast level or brew type. So take control of one of the most important variables for brewing quality coffee today and head over to thirdwavewater.com slash Prometheus or use the codes Prometheus at checkout to save 10% off your first purchase. Thanks to Third Wave Water for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into it. Now, I'm sure I probably don't even have to say this, but coffee brewers themselves aren't really known for their complexity, but it is of course nearly 2025 and the Aiden isn't really your parents, Mr. Coffee. At first glance, it does have a very simple and inoffensive design, and I don't think it'll clash with most kitchens or countertop appliances. And on its face, you've got the heads-up display and dial button combo that controls every function and setting on the brewer, which of course we're going to delve into a bit deeper in the next section. Also on the outside, you've got the thermal carafe, which is made of steel and finished in a nice matte black. Attached to the side is a removable, refillable, BPA-free water tank with a decently large capacity, meaning you can brew both small, single-serve cups or larger, multi-brew batches. And speaking of batch sizes, under the hood you have different baskets for each brewing style. A cone that's designed for single servings, and a flat bottom basket for larger batch brews. But again, we'll go more in depth on these in just a moment. But also under the hood is the water distribution system, which allows you to switch between two separate settings that aim for a proper coffee bed saturation depending on the basket you use. And when it comes to brewing options themselves, they range from simple to advanced. On the simple side, you have the instant brew setting, which is a set it and forget it, and runs with a single press, but you will have to choose the profile and quantity in the settings menu before you run it. Below that, you can also delve a bit deeper with the step-by-step -step guided option, which allows you to again select one of the preloaded roast level settings, a coffee-specific setting that are provided by fellow via their subscription, or a user-created profile, and lastly, choose the overall quantity. And speaking of user-created profiles, the next section is the Profile Editor, which allows you to delve a bit deeper into the available variables and advanced options. The editor also allows for certain adjustments to preloaded profiles, as well as building one from scratch by editing the base brew settings like temperature and the overall brew ratio, as well as the advanced settings like the bloom ratio, temperature, and duration, and also the number of pulses in your recipe from one to 10, the duration between them, as well as the temperature of each pulse individually. And the last brewing option is on schedule, where you can choose the time you want the brew to finish, the profile, volume, and frequency. So now that we've covered its main features, both simple and advanced, let's talk about how it performs, especially up against its main marketing point, brewing pour over quality coffee at the press of a button. Now, I think the difficulty here is we have no baseline. We have no starting point because pour over quality coffee is very vague. It's a very nebulous term to use and not everyone's expectations or opinions about a pour over or how it should taste are exactly the same. I mean, even when I asked our future AI overlords, what is the main characteristics of a pour over, they couldn't really give me any exact answer. All they could say is 
They are characterized by a clean, clear flavor with pronounced and nuanced taste notes, which to me sounds like a bit of a word soup saying the same thing four times. So that's kind of a dry hole. And honestly, if you were to ask me what's the best way to look at the quality of a brewer, especially a coffee brewer, I would say forget the buzzwords and let's focus on its variables of control. And when it comes to the Aiden, we have three. We have the basket you choose to brew in, the water temperature itself, and the way the aforementioned water is applied to the coffee. And personally, I think we should start with the baskets because that's the one choice you're gonna make every single time you brew, and it makes a relatively big difference. And as you can see, looking at both baskets, there is a significant difference between the single serve and the batch basket. The single serve option is a cone-shaped brewer, which can be a bit more finicky in my experience, but when you're dialed in, the coffees can be very clean and bright with less overall mouthfeel. And that's exactly what I've found in my brews on the single serve option. The batch basket itself offers a flat bottom option, which provides a more even bed of coffee, allowing for a more even flow of water through it. So the coffee tends to be more easily extracted, which creates a more forgiving brew method than cone brewers. And in the cup, they're oftentimes more balanced, full bodied, and generally more broadly appealing. And as a bonus benefit of the large basket, you can actually fit some smaller pour over drippers inside. So for example, my favorite Aurea can be dropped in and you can override the system to keep the single serve flow rate with the batch brew basket installed. And then you've got a way to brew your favorite dripper hands free. In terms of the application of water, the grinds in both flow settings, the single serve three stream and batch brew 12 stream have shown a full saturation of the coffee and relatively flat beds as well. And when it comes to the temperature, I slipped a thermometer into the brew stream and tried to capture peak temps straight from the source at a max 210 degrees set point compared to the same point on my time war kettle. And the Aiden maxed out at 201.4 and the kettle at 207.9. Now, of course, I'll be the first to admit this isn't the most scientific way to go about this, but it did appear as though there is some loss of heat somewhere along its water path. But I didn't do this test until I'd been brewing on the machine for weeks, and it wasn't because I saw any noticeable lack of quality. And considering the pour over kettle isn't that different and clearly has a similar issue, it's not gonna be a major problem in terms of brewing outcomes or really be outside of that mystical pour over quality. And with that said, both in terms of the flavor and the extraction percentages, the Aiden performed on par with what I would expect from a relatively experienced barista's pour over. So take that as you will. But first, before we wrap up this whole section, I think there is one caveat or one thing that should be mentioned, and that is the quality of the outcome of your cup or the extraction itself also majorly hinges on the grinder. So keep in mind that your results may vary, but overall my experience with the Aiden has been positive. Of course, regardless of how good the cups are or can be, or even how easily they're brewed, there's always downsides in the banana stand. And one of the bigger downsides that's affected most, if not all of the brews I've done is a carafe. And the fact that it's just not that insulated. If you're brewing larger batches, of course, the additional volume of coffee in the carafe will keep things warm a little longer. But with smaller single serve options, they won't hold temp for long at all, reaching lukewarm status in about 10 to 15 minutes. And when brewing on a schedule, a cold steel carafe in the morning will rob your coffee of its heat even faster. Also, when it comes to usability, I think the design of the screen and the controls aren't really that elegant of a solution. And when it comes to controlling it, the dial is used for both scroll and select, which makes complex adjustments in editing the profiles really time consuming and not all that user friendly. Now, the good news is that issue can be completely alleviated, at least for those who are willing to download Fellow's app. But the bad news is, at least currently at the time of filming this, the app itself is useless, only really showing device information, firmware version, registration, and date and time. And finally, I do have some concerns over the build and materials of the unit itself. The Aiden is almost entirely made of plastic, and it's surprisingly light, so I'm worried that it may not be built to last, but of course, that's more of a we'll see than anything else. The last time I reviewed a filter coffee brewer was three years ago, 
And that's because when it comes to making coffee, 99.7% of the time, I'll reach for a portafilter. And when the Aiden landed, I didn't really think that would change, but it did, at least a little bit. Interestingly enough, the real push I needed to drink more filter coffee was a blend of convenience and quality. And the Aiden, though not perfect, provided just that. The simplicity of brewing a cup or 10 without much input or thought made a filter coffee in the morning a welcome addition to my routine, or to share with guests less of a production or time sink. And really, my concerns with the Aiden overall are relatively minimal, with its longevity being the main thing that's still in question. And they do offer a three-year warranty with registration, so I think that could soften the blow a bit of the upfront cost of $365, which sounds like a lot, but it is on par with other high-end coffee brewers that are on the market, like the Ratio 6 or the Mocha Master. But on that note, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up, and as always, pass the conversation on to you. So. What are your thoughts on the fellow Aiden? Have you already bought it, pre-ordered it, waiting for it to arrive, or maybe already have it? If so, what pushed you towards it? What made you want to go for it? And if you aren't interested at all, what's pushing you away? So drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications when new videos drop. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for more coffee content. Help support the channel by considering becoming a member for unique exclusive perks. And as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.